Last night, the Oklahoma City Thunder lost once again, but this time to the Charlotte Hornets. Dwight Howard and Kimball Walker did their thing. Westbrook had his usual performance and he dunked on Michael Kidd Gilchrist. I believe we had the video of this poster. Corner for three. No, Adams has to rebound his eighth of the ball game. Westbrook cocking the hammer. Listen, he was I'm, in the air for a good 13 seconds. Listen, we were talking off camera. I have a theory that Russell Westbrook might be taller than 6'3 whenever you're able yeah, to dunk like, like that. He's That's, like 6'4". Six, six, yeah, four. whenever you're able to dunk like that, it's pretty impressive. Now, the Thunder, they've lost again. I believe they're 12-14 and 14 on the season. Melo left early from the locker room, didn't talk to reporters. There's already frustrations growing in Oklahoma City. This was a supposed super team before the season started. What's going on in OKC? What do you think's happening? <sighs> Is it just hard to create Every, these super teams? No, it's not. It's when you create a super team, you know, everyone has to know their role. I don't think they all know their role. Yeah. I mean, you have Paul George and, you know, Westbrook, who are still young enough to both be considered star, star power players. And then you have Melo, who, who's on the back end of his career, yeah. who needs to make the most adjustment, but I don't think he wants to because yeah. he feels he needs to prove himself. He laughed at the question of coming off the bench prior to the season. Now that might be a viable thing for no, Oklahoma I mean, City coming Thunder. Off the you... ben- coming off the bench doesn't help them. They just got to understand their role. They have to make the sacrifice. Right. Like, they have to make the sacrifice. All of them. Um, like with Golden State, you know, you can see them. They, they all took sacrifices to yeah. win. Who do you think is a player that doesn't understand his role the most on OKC? Probably Melo and Westbrook. And Westbrook, okay. You know, because there's there's They're fighting for the alpha spot. No, 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 because Westbrook doesn't understand that the game, you don't need to shoot game winners anymore. You don't need to force those chuck up threes. You have three point shooters. You have actual one on one players. Yeah. So you don't need, there's like that that last five minutes shouldn't be going to you, Russell, unless you can get to the lane and dish out. But other than that, that goes to Melo and and PG 13. Like they have to make plays that. That, that, that includes them inside the game. But they got to understand that there's no one quarter you, one quarter me, one quarter that we try to share it in the four. That's yeah, not how you play basketball. Yeah, definitely. Prior to the season, your boy John Wall was kind of vouching to get Paul George in the fold in D.C. Seeing Paul George struggle a little bit in OKC, are you kind of I want Boogie. With, you, so you just, but, you're but all no. Paul George, you want Boogie. That's what yep. I'm saying. Is Paul George I'm off the struggling? Paul George train. <laughs> Listen, is Paul George struggling or is just the team struggling? I guess the team. The team's struggling. I don't want to risk it. Definitely. Paul George is still Paul averaging George. 23. I mean, yeah, he's yeah. still playing he's well. Right. You know, so it was like, oh, who's playing well? Him or Oladipo? They're both playing great basketball. So Oladipo's right? playing a little bit better. Yeah. But... I mean, you've had you've had massive inconsistencies with the Thunder and like the t- yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're considering a team. That's not him personally. No, no. But it's like you know, you have three ISO heavy guys trying to gel into one. Mm-hmm. You also had you know, in the beginning of the season, they were actually a good defensive team, which is kind of shocking because you know, not a great uh, you know history of Melo playing defense and Russ kind of playing defense. Um, but it's weird now. Now they're having defensive struggles, and the offense sound, uh, kind of like has been in gear a little bit recently. They had one four or five before last night's ass kicking. But it's weird. Like Billy Donovan last night said, that he's really really excited about how the offense looked, but like the defense was absolutely atrocious. And they got run through in the third. Yeah, they have forty he, points in the third quarter to can't. the Hornets who suck. The ho- <laughs> but you got to remember, you're talking about you, <laughs> you're talking about three players who revolve around scoring. So as a coach, you want the score. You want your offense to be. You know, because it's going to engage them. If Melo's not getting passes and is not scoring, he's not playing defense. It's weird, though. So I, it, I, it hurts either way. So, you know, you have the three superstars, the big three, and you can definitely tell they get up for these big games. Like, they already have wins against the Spurs, against the Timberwolves, and we saw that win against the Warriors right. a couple weeks ago. But they're definitely playing down to the competition. They have losses against the Kings, Nets, Mavericks, Magic, and Hornets last night. Oof. So it's like, why do, why do these guys that can easily take care of these shitty teams like the Hornets, why are they let, playing down the competition so funny and letting is, them run over them? Well, I know personally Melo, just like just watching his game, whenever he played like Minnesota, Milwaukee, I always took the other team. Because it's like he just doesn't get up for those type of yeah. games. Or those yeah. type of, like he likes the big stage. And he has to understand, you know, Every game is a big stage at this point in your career, yeah. Because you're fighting for something, especially in the Russell Conference, winning any any potential place in the standings is so yeah. important. Like they, they like they should be walking into wins, not like they don't need the gym, but the, to be 12 and 14, yeah. Like that's. But when you look on the flip side, a team like the Rockets, they're 21 and four. I mean, they added a superstar this offseason. But they, but they the, added they added one they, super, one, yeah. they added yeah. one superstar that didn't play. <laughs> 
majority of that season. Right. You know, he missed what 15 games. Yeah. Like so, that's you. You know, now you just got your, you know, your core players. And also, you can make a case I guess Chris Paul is more complimentary to what James Harden does than yeah. Paul yeah, George but, but and Melo are to but what Russ said, does. They, they played in the summer, so they got to know each other. These guys just got put together, and they're trying to figure it out. And it's like they don't know each other. They're trying to, you know, it's like game by game. Well, they're yeah. trying to figure Getting it out. Getting traded the day before training camp starts not exactly conducive yeah. to gelling with yeah, your team. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're trying, to, you're, you're trying to figure it out right then and right there. If things continue to remain bumpy for OKC, do we foresee a trade at the deadline? Of I don't Paul know. I've, I kind of brought this up because, like, people have speculated about, like, you know, Paul George is the is the most valuable asset that the Thunder have right now. Mm-hmm. You think it's far fetched that they would get rid of Paul George at the trading deadline if they're really, really struggling? I don't. But you could you could you could deal him off to a team on the fringe of the playoffs and get a big haul for Paul George. But you're gonna... or no, I'm sorry, not a big haul, but a decent haul. You can get some nice obviously... pieces from a team like yes. Cleveland. You can, maybe, you can maybe you can maybe finagle that Brooklyn pick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see it, but I don't. If you if you go to because I'm, I'm that's what I'm saying. They're gonna go on some. They're gonna play a bunch of East Coast teams. They're gonna go on some type yeah. of on some. Type yeah, but of they game. have yeah, but <laughs> the next three games. You know what the next three games are? They have the Pacers on Wednesday night. Victor Oladipo win in, in Indiana right now. Paul George is against the 16 11 Pacers. Win. Paul George is returning. Right, fine. Then they have win. All right, win against the Pacers. Mm-hmm. Friday they have the Sixers. Win. win. And then Saturday they have the Knickerbockers. Oh, that's definitely a win. Win. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> that's definitely a win. Those, you those got two players. All three of those teams are better than the Thunder right now. In the East? In, yeah. Yes. In theory, in theory they are. Yes. In theory they are, but you got two players also, going back to their hometown. Yes, but. It's on. But the Knicks are back-to-back. Melo playing a back-to-back. Not exactly you know, No, 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 because he ain't really going to be playing. He won't play against the Sixers. He's going to save <laughs> he himself for the. Like, for he won't be playing against the Sixers. Yeah. He's going to be playing against the all like right. you, nice. We're gonna see when those lines come out. We're gonna see how you feel yeah. on Wednesday. <laughs> I, 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 I can win, win, win. Okay. We're gonna find out.